Welcome to Crusade Now. Thank you for joining us. My name is David Brown, and with me is Darewood Stewart. Nice to have you with us, Darewood. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. He's a wonderful brother in the Lord. And today, we were just chomping at the bit to get back here and to have a conversation about praise and the power that praise has in our life, the power that it has to transform us, and the power that it has literally to move mountains. And Darewood, you had a unique experience yeah, concerning just, praise. A few years ago, I had a dream. And in this dream, the Lord was talking to me, and He said, uh, I want you to begin to praise me for that which I'm about to do. Amen. And kind of like you're doing, you're shaking your head, you know, and you say, yeah, okay, right. and you walk away. Right. Well, the Lord reached over and got a hold of me. He said, I said, I want you to begin to praise me for that which I'm about to do. You praise me for the things that I've done, and you praise me for the things I'm doing. Right. But I want you to praise me for the things that I'm about to do, because you don't have a clue what there is that you're coming up against. Amen. And a, a few weeks later, I was visiting a church, and while I was in the service there, the Lord brought to my understanding of what he was talking about, about praising him for what he was about to do. He showed me the walls of Jericho and how the children of Israel walked around there once each day for six days. And on the seventh day, God said, you walk around there seven times. And on the seventh time, when you hear the priest sound with the trumpet, I want you to shout with a great shout. Now, that was a praise to God. Amen. Now, God didn't tell the children of Israel what the, he was going to do. Right. The walls were big enough for two chariots to run down them side by side, right. and at least two stories high, maybe three. If you would take dynamite and blow those walls up, you would still have a, a big pile of rubble out That's here right. that you'd have to cross over. But when they finished that seventh time and those trumpets sounded, they shouted with a great shout and the walls fell down flat. Hallelujah. Woo, glory Hallelujah. to God. You know, they went across on dry ground, you know, That's no, right. no impedance. No, the, the truth is that it was an impenetrable fortress. Absolutely. Jericho was considered a city that couldn't be taken because its walls were so mighty. Mm -hmm. It was a powerful fortress. And there was no army on the face of the planet that would have laid siege to Jericho because it would have been thought insurmountable mm -hmm. as a barrier. And yet, this is how God had his people to conquer that city. Amen. He told them to praise Him for what He was about to do. And as a result of those praises going up, the walls fell down. Now, that's, there's an instruction for our lives in that story. Well, actually, you know, the God, He said He inhabits the praises of the saints. Amen. Now, we know that the devil, on the other hand, he oppresses us. Right. So if we want to get away from the oppression of the devil, we need to praise the Lord. Amen. He said, in all things, praise the Lord in Christ Jesus, for this is the will of God towards you. Amen. You see, so that we can overcome those hard situations. You That's see, right. That we don't see coming up against That's us. That's right. And I don't know what they shouted that day. I would not be at all surprised if they shouted hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which means praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, praise is a word that we use a lot in Christian circles, but it has a little bit of a mystery to it, probably, to someone who maybe hasn't heard the word. And it's a simple word. It's not complex. We use it in everyday speech when we say, well, I need to have my house appraised mm -hmm. because I need to know what the value of my house is because I want to sell it. So you have someone come by and appraise the house. And what they do is they, they show its value. They determine its value. Or if you had a piece of jewelry mm -hmm. and you wanted to know how valuable is this jewelry, well, what you would do is you would have it appraised mm -hmm. and they would tell you what the value of the jewelry was based on the appraisal. Well, that's all in the world that praising the Lord is. It's valuing and esteeming Him and ascribing to Him glory and power and honor, that which He rightly deserves. That's what praising is. And so when we say hallelujah, all that means is praise the Lord. How valuable, how precious, how holy, how honorable and glorious is He. That's really what praise means. Amen? Yes, and you know, for the flesh... Praise doesn't come natural. That's the truth. You see, the flesh is the one that wants the praise. Right. So it's something that, that we as saints must practice. You know, it's something that you have to intentionally to do to get it right. to bring forth. You know, if you smash your thumb with a hammer when you're working and building something, the first thing that comes out usually is a, a word that is no good. That's right. But if you can learn to say, praise the Lord, ah, praise the Lord, that hurts. 
right. you know, then the, the pain goes away. Right. Because God takes the place of all other things when we right. praise Him. That brings there. the scripture to mind. Don't be overcome by evil, mm -hmm. but overcome evil mm -hmm. with good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, when you were talking about that, it made me think about Jesus. You know, truth came out of Him when He was the most hurt, when He was the weakest, at His weakest point. The very essence of God flowed out of him in his speech. Mm -hmm. When he was on the cross, laid bare, marred, like Isaiah says, more than any man, with ribbons of quivering flesh just hanging off of his body, bones disjointed, as is described in Psalms 22. Mm -hmm. What he did was he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was quoting scripture. He was quoting scripture when he was the weakest in the wilderness after 40 days and 40 nights without anything to drink. And all that time, what Mark describes is that he had been with the wild beasts. Mm -hmm. I imagine that those were demonic spirits like the mm -hmm. bulls of Bashan that encompassed about the cross that would buffet him that whole time. He was in a weakened state. And yet when Satan tempted him, the Word of God came out. That's the only way we can overcome the enemy is by the Word of God. Amen. Jesus said, I'm your example. Follow me. If I, as I have done, That's right. do. Even his mother, Mary, you know, when he's at the first, uh, that wedding there, and he changed the water into wine. She right. said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. That's right. And that's what we need to do. We need to look in the Word of God and find out what he tells us to do. And a lot of people try to tell you from Genesis to Malachi's Old Testament, but they're wrong. That's right. It's the books of the law and the prophets. Right. The Old Testament is that law of circumcision, that law of sacrifice, that Jesus is now our sacrifice, and He is our circumcision. Amen. And that's something that we can praise Him for, that we don't have to physically do something to our bodies. That's right. Yeah, the, the Old Covenant was, you're talking about uh, ordinances mm -hmm. that were written on animal skins, mm -hmm. and they were placed outside the ark. Absolutely. And Paul later makes plain, they were added because of transgressions. Mm -hmm. Now, God was offering something better to the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. He was offering them Abraham's covenant. And yet, when they were at the foot of the mountain, and Jesus' voice before he became a man thundered out those Ten Commandments, which had existed in the courts of heaven. They always had been. Adam and Eve were instructed to walk in those ways of righteousness. It was a sin for Cain to murder Abel. Absolutely. It was a sin for Adam and for Eve to dishonor their father and to be covetous of That's what right. they did not have. That was a sin already. Those laws existed, but now when Jesus' voice thundered out these commandments from that mountain, what Israel said was, don't let him talk to us anymore. Amen. We, he will kill us. You go up there, Moses, and you find out what he'll tell us to do. Come back down, let us know. We'll do that. But we don't want to be close to him. Now, he wanted them to be a whole nation of kings and priests. That's right. He was inviting them into a covenant where he wouldn't write his laws on tablets of stone, but in their very hearts. But because they had a heart of unbelief, because they pushed him away, then he had to add. He added the ordinances because of their unruly hearts, and they were not written on tablets of stone. In fact, they were written on animal skins, something much less permanent. There you go. And God always knew that he was going to make the Christian covenant, the same covenant that he had made with Abraham, the same covenant he made with Enoch, the same covenant that he made with Seth, the same covenant that he made with Noah, that he was going to offer that covenant around the table when Jesus was with the disciples, the covenant that you and I partake mm -hmm. of. 